A few weeks ago, Jimmy Dore announced his departure from the TYT network. For those of us with our fingers on the pulse of progressive YouTube, this did not come as a surprise. And so uh, I'm quitting and we're moving on. Jimmy had been absent from the TYT main show for a very long time, and both sides had taken not so subtle jabs at one another. This was a long time coming, and it didn't change a whole lot. I believe that there will be a much more significant high profile exit in the near future. Well, maybe I want to quit my job, right? I certainly think about it a lot. <laughs> That's right. I believe that before too long, Anna Kasparian will quit the Young Turks. Now, why would Anna leave a network where she is the second most important person? Why would she leave a company where she thinks of her boss, Cenk Uger, as family? Why would she leave the show where she is both a primary co-host and executive producer? The very show that put her on the media map. Well, there is some good evidence to suggest that Anna quitting is at the very least a strong possibility. By the way, everything I'm going to say in this video are things she said publicly, so I'm not doxing or giving away secrets here. Reason number one, she hates her job. As a YouTuber myself, I understand the desire for internet fame and notoriety. I suppose we're all kind of chasing that here. Anna is definitely internet famous, and I have no doubt she enjoys all the benefits that come with that. She's also very well versed in the downsides. Like many well-known people on YouTube, particularly those who cover controversial subjects, she has endured some serious harassment, including doxing, rape threats, and death threats. Obviously, most threats over the internet are not to be taken seriously, but apparently somewhere alarming enough that she's gone to great lengths to protect herself. What you're doing is spreading false rumors and, and, and complete character assassination that has led to serious threats against my life and serious threats against my family members' lives. But isn't her work worth it? I mean, she makes a ton of money, doesn't she? There's a website that says she's worth $2 million, after all. Well, those websites usually just make things up, and that's definitely true in her case. I ain't rich, I'm not even close, even though there's a stupid ass website that pretends like I'm worth a ton of money my, my salary is not public. No one knows what I make. Not to mention TYT as a company is currently struggling financially. And again, I can't even express how grateful we are for your support and for keeping us afloat, especially in a difficult time in media and digital media to be specific. So digital media is in massive trouble, massive trouble. The fact that we have survived is near miraculous. At what point in my career do I get to get, get to where I feel like we're safe and we're accomplished and like <laughs> I don't have to fucking like lay awake at night with anxiety and stress and like anyway, whatever. This entire video could be rendered moot before too long, as the company could fold soon enough. It's worth noting that, although I'm sure she's very passionate about news and politics, the Trump years have not been kind to her mental health. She's even gone through therapy, in part to help cope with her work and all of the depressing stories that they have to cover. You know, I've had a lot of these moments uh, since 2016 uh, where I just wanna quit because it's torture going through these types of stories every day um, and un like really understanding the cruelty of human nature, you know? Like that's what we do every day, we deal with that. Of course, it's not just that politics can be depressing, they can also be incredibly divisive. So for as many fans as someone like Anna has, she probably has way more haters. Obviously, most of the grief she gets is from the right, but this is not exclusively the case. Centrists or establishment Dems are oftentimes at odds with TYT's more progressive outlook, and they are some of the least charitable critics out there. Well, the war is on, no. it doesn't matter. No, it but I don't matter. wanna go to fucking war. I wanna do the fucking right thing. I wanna do the right thing. I wanna do the fucking right thing. What are we doing? What are we doing? I feel like we're constantly like at war with the entire fucking country. Just this person is not a bad person. The person who's like smearing me and smearing you is not a bad person. Mm, agree to disagree. No, I, I like her, I like her, and I've followed her work since I started working at TYT, and now I'm really upset no, that she's insane. accusing me of they're these terrible insane. things. And I just, okay, so, I can't handle this okay. anymore. Amazingly enough, TYT even has a good number of critics on their left, too. Sometimes their own fans even turn on them. But it's like nothing matters, like 12 years at TYT and 12 years of sharing my in-depth opinions on policy doesn't fucking matter. Right. All it takes is one misquote on Twitter for people to lose their shit. Nope. Or people are you've been lying to us for 12 years. That's exactly right, That's yes. what it is. I put That's myself through the hell moment. of working in independent media <laughs> so I can lie to you guys and make no money and yeah, that's what I've been doing. As is always the case on the internet, for all the worthwhile criticisms we all deserve, 
There are plenty of people who are simply hostile nitpickers, looking to seize upon anything, or people who are simply willing to make things up. As someone who is very critical of TYT, my channel is kind of built on bashing them, I can tell you that this is true even in their case, and it seems to bother Anna more than anyone else. Reason number two. She has options. As much as I loathe Anna's politics, and as condescending as she can be, she is a genuinely talented person who has serious career options outside of TYT. She actually probably could have gotten into acting at a younger age. She even had an opportunity to audition for that 70s show, but her parents put a stop to that. The furthest I got was an audition for um, that 70s show for Jackie's role, and I got a call back. And once I got a call back, my mom was like, we're done with this. Perhaps the acting ship has sailed, but she has other options in the field that she currently works. She's passed up higher paying options at other networks. I assume she could get another one of these offers if she really wanted. Of course, she could always go independent like Dave Rubin. I'm sure lots of people would go along with her and support her financially, but I don't see her going that route. I think she wants to get out of politics altogether, and she has an option there too. Over the last few years, Anna has gotten into interior design and home improvement. You know I like woodworking. You know it's it's one of my favorite hobbies now. Mm -hmm. And I do, just to be completely honest with everyone, like I do sometimes think about like starting a business, right? Because I'm gonna keep it real, I have fantasies about quitting my job, a lot. She even has an Instagram page devoted to it, and one fan even paid her to work on their house. Given that politics and being a public figure stresses her out, I could see her making a career change in that direction. And so then I have these fantasies about working in a field where I don't know anything about politics, right? Nothing. Mm. I don't read about politics, I don't even think about Trump. I just, I go about my day, I do the things that I need to do, and then that's it. And that ignorance, Sounds so good. Reason number three, and this is the most important and controversial point. She's losing her faith in the cause. TYT is an excellent example of what Thomas Sowell refers to as the anointed. People who fancy themselves to be members of an enlightened third party capable of making better decisions on people's behalf than they can for themselves. This obviously informs their progressive politics, but it's also an important factor in how they view information, communication, and the media. Jank, the intellectual leader of TYT, believes that most Americans are actually on board with the progressive agenda, and that, given the option, people will consistently choose to elect politicians like Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. If you actually ask the American people on issue by issue, they are massively progressive. They, they might not call themselves liberal, they might call themselves progressives or moderate or independent, whatever you want to call them, but look at the issue. So why aren't progressives more successful? Well, even though most people view progressive positions favorably, they just don't know it. And they're consistently fooled into voting for non-progressive politicians. It's easier to trick people to vote for a person and, and you could pretend that they have positions that are in favor of you and then they turn around and, 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 and have all these positions that are actually in favor of their donors. It couldn't possibly be that people who vote for Republicans and moderate Democrats have different values and different ideas on what the relationship should be between the state and the citizen. It's that they're being fooled by the press and campaign ads. Jenk's strategy for correcting this is twofold. First, he wants to limit political advertisement through campaign finance reform, aka getting money out of politics. Second, and more important for the purposes of this video, Jank wants to fix the media, because apparently, in its current manifestation, the press provides far too much cover for the right. The only reason why the whole country doesn't know the Republican Party lies systematically on every issue, every time, is because the mainstream media covers their ass. And they call everything 50-50. Every night, Jank fights what he believes to be the good fight, whether it's on the show or at progressive rallies and functions. He's even marshaled the Young Turks audience in an attempt to bend media narratives to how he sees them. Jank honestly thinks that he has the facts on his side, and he's determined to win the battle of information so that people can finally realize that voting for progressive politicians is in their best interests. Dubious as I think this goal is, no one can say that Jank is uncommitted. The man even makes videos about news while he's on vacation. Jank is the happy warrior. Anna, not so much. I've watched TYT for a very long time, and years ago it seemed like Anna was totally on board with Jenk's mission. A properly informed public would see the virtues of progressivism. Over the years though, especially since Donald Trump's entrance into American politics, she seems to have grown increasingly frustrated. Again, we have a, a, a chunk of the population here that continuously votes against their best interests. and. We have to get to the bottom of why that is. Why is that happening? I mean, obviously there's misinformation, they're being misled, they're being manipulated. And it's frustrating because you 
try to give evidence and provide information about what's really going on to look out for them. And they reject it as elitist propaganda. And it's like, no, 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 what you've bought into is the propaganda. Sometimes she seems to want to completely give up. What we do doesn't matter. <laughs> like what we do here, the information that we share, trying to be, you know, protectors of democracy or whatever the hell we're doing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. None well, of it matters. You see, Anna seems to understand something important about human cognition, that facts really don't matter. Scott Adams, who wrote a book about this, uses a metaphor of a two-movie reality to describe how our society takes in new information. I was loving watching the coverage of the memo because it's the most perfect example you've seen of what I've been describing for about two years now when Trump got in the game, and I told you that you were going to see um, a complete change in how humans understand other humans. And I just started describing this a long time ago as watching two movies on the same screen. So we're all sitting in the same theater, but half of us are seeing a different movie, even though we're looking at the same time at the same screen. Um, the folks at MSNBC and CNN say the memo was a big nothing. The people at Fox News and probably other right-leaning places and their followers are saying, my God, this is Watergate. It's This is really big. Rather than shaping their worldview to fit the facts, people shape the facts to fit their worldview. Anna gets this. American politics is the white or gold or blue and black dress like oh. debate, right? We're all looking at the same thing, but see something completely different. It's kind of incredible. And she seems to understand the implications of this for the media. Given that people have free choice within the media market, people will flock to outlets that confirm their worldview rather than challenge it. In other words, vigilant fact-based journalism and reporting that TYT aspires, and as far as I'm concerned, fails to live up to, is a fool's errand insofar as persuading people is concerned. We have to find solutions for this. I don't know what we can do. But More responsible media, I guess. I know, but I mean, Which we've been impossible. fighting that battle for, I've been here for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember, hey, the reason why we cover these Fox News segments is because if we don't, if we don't debunk the lies, then no one will. Yeah, yeah, we've been debunking the lies. It, it, it hasn't, anyway. I think it's the, helped a little. Even if progressives had all the facts on their side, which they don't, and even if these facts were effectively communicated to the voting public, people still wouldn't necessarily vote for them. In other words, TYT's fundamental mission is misguided at best, or a waste of time at worst. What is it like losing your faith in something? Well, I used to be Christian, but now I'm an atheist. I used to be a progressive, but now I'm a libertarian. So I know a thing or two about what it's like to have a major paradigm shift in your worldview. In both cases, it was a very gradual process. I had my seeds of doubts, but I didn't want to let go. Your politics and your religion are so important to your identity. So even though part of me knew that what I believed was BS, I didn't want to let go. What we know about human cognition is that people take and change positions for emotional reasons. And that was certainly true in my case. It wasn't until I became alienated with Christianity and progressivism that I started to identify differently. Anna has her seeds of doubt. I don't like admitting this because for the majority of things that you wanna do, I'm behind you and I believe in you and all that. I don't wanna be one of your doubters, but time to time, I am one of your doubters. She's sacrificed enormously for Jenk's vision. This means that she's highly emotionally invested in being where she is now. After all, no one wants to believe that all their hard work is in vain. I honestly believe that this is one of the only reasons she's still there. Typically, when she's experiencing moments of doubt, Jenk reels her back in with reassuring words. And you know me, I'm an eternal optimist, and I think we're gonna rescue it. I think we're gonna rescue journalism, democracy, uh, government. I think we're gonna rescue all of it, okay? At this point, Anna swears she's not going to quit, that she's just in a slump right now. Brene Brown talks about how everyone goes through dips in their careers, right? Uh -huh. And the question is, when you experience the dip, do you push forward or do you let that dip destroy you, mm -hmm. right? I'm in a fucking dip and it's mm -hmm. deep. Perhaps that's the case, but I believe that if her work continues to take an emotional toll on her, that she'll finally part ways with TYT. She has her doubts, she just needs that extra push. In particular, I believe that if Donald Trump gets reelected, which I expect will happen at this point, she'll be gone after the election. I guess we'll find out. Mm -hmm.